See, if you're a big boy, that's how you carry a head right there. With a beard. <laughs> With a beard. We're going to get ready to run the valves. One thing I wanted to point out, uh, there's actually a pretty cool uh, sheet that you can actually print off a Merchant Automotive's website. This actually tells you how to adjust the valves. If you go onto their website, it's actually on there. It'll tell you. We're going to explain a little bit more once we get into there. And then to actually start showing you guys on the motor how to do it. But I just wanted to start here and kind of show you. Uh, if you log on to Merchant's site, really good information there uh, to help you guys and assist. This is what some guys consider the hardest part of the job. So definitely make sure you check out their website. We've got everything ready to go with the valve train. Next thing we need to do is get the balancer lined up to the timing marks. You'll see right here, there's going to be a timing mark here on the actual front of the cover, and then there's going to be one on the balancer. You want to get this rolled up and get these two marks lined up, and then see where you're at on the motor. We've got the balancer where we need to be. Uh, cylinder number one, both these valves are going to be, the push rods are going to be loose. Um, reading through the instructions, it's going to tell you how to get this lined up and how to get everything set. When you look on here, you're going to have red and yellow boxes. Um, you're going to have the intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Prime example, cylinder number one, it says intake. We're going to go ahead and adjust this. To adjust this, you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and a 14 millimeter wrench. What you're going to do is crack your jam nut loose. Take your 12 thousandths feeler gauge, stick it in between the bridge and the rocker arm, put your flat blade screwdriver on there, and you're going to want a little bit of drag on there. Um, what I like to do is set them just maybe a touch hot, that way once we rotate the motor over, they're going to have you rotate the motor 10 revolutions, um, when you come back they're generally spot on and tight, but you're going to be looking for just a little bit of drag. That's got the drag, we'll move on to the next. Now we're gonna move on to exhaust. You'll see I can't stick the fueler gauge in there. So we'll loosen. Tighten it down. Got some drag. Go to cylinder number three on the intake. Now on the chart, we did the first three in red. The next one coming back is gonna be, it shows cylinder number three, the exhaust. We're gonna skip that one. Uh, we'll do that on the next revolution. So now we're gonna to go to cylinder number five on the intake. So you can see once I have the fueler gauge in here and it's where I want it, make sure you tighten that jam nut. You're going to want to put it pretty tight. Even though we're going to be going back over it again, crank it down tight. Um, I'm sure there's a torque spec. The problem is, is if you're trying to put a torque wrench on here, that means your flat blade screwdriver is going to be out of here and then you're going to, the adjustment nut's going to be moving just a little bit. So I like to hold the screwdriver uh, in one hand, the wrench in the other to crank down. We got the first revolution or the first 360 done. Um, Logan's gonna finish up that side. For the chart, as you can see, I got my side done. Logan's over here doing his side. Uh, he's gonna do the his only. He's only got three cylinders in red. 
he's gonna adjust those ones. Once we're done, we'll turn in another 360 revolution and go back through. He'll do his yellows and I'll do the red, uh, yellows on my side. Now we're gonna go and rotate the motor 360 degrees. One thing to note out, when you drop your valve train in and you got your push rods in and everything's torqued and you're gonna start adjusting valves, if something doesn't feel like it's going right or you get a hard spot, stop. You don't wanna push a, bend a push rod. Um, that would tell me you don't have a push rod seated down in uh, correctly and you need to stop, take stuff back apart and look and see what you got going on. As you can see, Logan's got it lined up here now. Um, so these valves, as you can see, cylinder number one, the valves are tight. Cylinder number four valves on Logan's side should be loose. And uh, we're gonna start adjusting these uh, the yellow boxes now. One thing to point out too, guys, if you're taking your motor apart, if you're taking your engine apart for head gaskets or whatever it may be, always really good practice to always adjust your valves no matter what. Um, I've had guys in the past tell me before, oh, I don't need to adjust the valves. They didn't machine the head. We just, we put a different gasket in. I even put the same thickness gasket in. I don't care what you're doing. If you're pulling the valve train out, always readjust the valves. I, you don't know how many times I've heard that's come back to bite guys hard before. So I cannot stress enough. If you're lifting that valve train out, take the hour it may take you by yourself doing it to adjust these valves and make sure you have everything correctly adjusted. That can be detrimental to the motor. <laughs> it will blow up if you don't have them adjusted properly and they're that far out of spec. Um, especially if you're taking your heads to the machine shop um, and actually having the heads milled. Um, GM specs, I know GM says you don't need to go and adjust them depending on you know what their straight edge and the feeler gauge is. Just a safe practice, we always take them in the machine shop, have them milled, pressure checked, the whole nine yards. Uh, Logan and I just finished up doing the yellow boxes, adjusting all the valves in yellow. So we're gonna rotate this motor over 10 times, come back, recheck the valves one more time. If they did go out of adjustment, we'll adjust them at that point and then we can drop the valve covers. All right, we just turned the motor over, 10 revolutions. At this point now, we are going to go and double check all the valves that we just adjusted. Now that everything's seated, make sure everything's still in adjustment. If there are valves that would need to be adjusted at this point in time, we'll go ahead and do them. At this point, we are going to go and install the valve covers. You'll see here we have new valve cover gaskets that come in the kits. Always make sure you put a new valve cover gasket on. Very crucial. We also have the dowels installed uh, on both sides so that we have no problems with alignment. 